Hey guys, it's Bailey. Um, it's been a couple years since I've done a vlog like this. Uh, do people even still say vlog, you know, the V? I, I don't know, I've been on YouTube since 2007. I don't even know what it's like anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's been a little while since I've really done any video where I just sit and talk to the camera, especially transition related. A lot of stuff has been happening in the past couple of years. I graduated from college at long last. I graduated with a BFA in theater arts. I did my first movie role. Um, I, you know, I'm just gonna drop my IMDb page down below. Shameless self promotion. I mean, there's a few things I could go on to talk about, and I might do that in later vlogs. But I want to get to the heart of why I'm finally making another video. Today is September 14th, 2020, and I am now five years on testosterone aka hormone replacement therapy. So I figure I'll give like a whole uh, check-in with everything. Um, let's start at the very bottom, build our way back up. So a couple of years ago I had made a video called five things that they don't tell you about taking testosterone. I'll link that down below as well for those of you who haven't seen greasy acne filled me <laughs> uh, talk about some unusual things I experienced and things that hadn't really been talked about. One thing I had said was my feet grew. Um, not much considering I was already 20 years old when I started hormone therapy. Was I 20? Was I 19? Time makes no sense anymore. Uh, but my feet did grow a little bit. They went up about a size, um, even if they really hadn't, you know, I like to pretend they did. The main thing is I don't have to worry about if I'm branching off into the boys section when I'm looking at men's shoes. They definitely got a, they got a little longer, they got a little bit wider, um, and, well, I learned that the hard way with my cosplay boots for a shadow cast of Dr. Horrible when the ones I had in high school suddenly didn't fit anymore. Good thing that show was only like 40 minutes. Moving on up, legs, hair. Hair everywhere. And I'm, and I'm honestly not too surprised considering the men in my family are quite hairy and testosterone, you know, when you start taking that when you're AFAB, it definitely plays to um, your genetics. I'm definitely a little bit stronger with my legs. I could definitely run a little bit more uh, than I used to. I've actually recently taken up running, and I'm hoping to really improve on that. Um, I was diagnosed with exercise-induced asthma in high school, and that's always been kind of still there, though not as bad as it was. And I'm trying so hard to try to work past it, if that's even possible. To the fun areas ass hair. It's not a myth. Vaginal hair. Oh yeah, that definitely grew too. But what also grew is um, the clitoris, or the micropenis, as some transmasculine folks refer to it as. Um, it definitely got thicker, and it definitely got longer. I definitely didn't grow like an actual penis penis, but you know what? It's all good. I know it's probably going to get a little TMI with this, but who cares? I've already talked about clitoris. Um, no going back. Another thing I talked about in that five things they don't tell you about testosterone video was lubricant all of a sudden started to burn and I had to look for a specific kind of brand that would be a little gentler. Thankfully I seem to be past that awkwardness and sex with my fiance is a lot more, well it's actually pleasurable. And we're moving on up to the torso area. Well, <sighs> So as of this past May, I am three years post-top surgery, and as of August, I am three years post-revision. I had my surgery in 2017 with Dr. Alan Friedman of New York, and I honestly, I love the results. I mean, my, my chest hair hides like a lot of my scarring, but you know what, I never really cared about the scars, if they were going to show how nasty they were going to look. I just wanted to be able to take my shirt off and you know, not worry about it. I did put like a little bit of scar cream, a little bit of vitamin E oil on at the beginning, but I just, I don't know, I'm, it doesn't bother me. Some people it definitely might, but for me, I'm good. Um, the way Dr. Friedman had done my surgery was he didn't nipple graft, he kind of left it hanging on to some of the skin so it still had some of the nerves, actually had all the nerves. Um, there's still like a little bit of uh, fat tissue underneath for it to cling to, so this way I didn't risk them, you know, losing feeling, I didn't risk them falling off. I actually have full feeling in both nipples and full sensation uh, in the pectoral area. 
As you can see, I am also fucking hairy. Quick little funny story. Uh, I had to shave this off for a roll at one point, and I was really upset about it. And when I was in the bathroom taking care of it, uh, Paul says to me, I thought you didn't want chest hair. And I'm like, yeah, but it grew on me. I really was initially hoping that it would be smooth, but you know what? I kind of like it. Definitely got broader in the shoulder area, especially if you've been following me on Instagram. I've been doing pole dancing lately. Um, I actually just passed one year with taking uh, classes for that, and honestly, it's definitely been the best I've ever been in terms of you know fitness. I feel confident for once with uh, in terms of dance and movement, and it's just it's a lot of fun. And we're moving on up to the throat slash voice. Uh, obviously, I developed a little bit of an Adam's apple. Um, I actually didn't even think about that when I first started, and when I first noticed a bump like seven, eight months in, I pointed that out to my mom. She's like, you're not supposed to have an Adam's apple. You were, you know, AFAB. That's probably not going to grow. And, well, no, <laughs> it actually turns out I was growing an Adam's apple. I think that's another thing they don't really talk about, um, that you do grow an Adam's apple. It's just... I don't know, it's just one of those things that escapes most conversations. As for the voice, uh, when I first started testosterone, I expected, you know, to have that squeaky up and down type thing for a little while, but actually, if you compare my voice from one month on testosterone... So yeah, month on testosterone. That's the thing. ...to three months on testosterone. Uh, it's been a while since I made this video, or since I made a video, I should say. I never really had that weird squeaky period. I just, I like to say it dropped like a rock into a pond. With my singing beforehand, I had, uh, I want to say an alto to a mezzo range. I was definitely an alto in denial in that terms. I don't think I ever really measured my vocal range, but if I had to take a guess, uh, it would definitely be from a B3 to an F5. I didn't really have a lot in terms of range, and I definitely didn't have enough in terms of technique and stability, and I hated the way my voice was so light and airy. And then when my voice dropped, I all of a sudden became a bass baritone, and that was also a struggle, because in the theater world, everyone's a goddamn tenor. But now I have a range sitting at E2 to an F4 on a good day in F-sharp 4, um, and it's still coming together. I'll probably do a video at some point about singing updates, but for now, I'm just posting singing videos. If you want to like look on my channel, take a look at some of those, go ahead. Moving on up to the face, obviously I grew a lot of facial hair. As far as acne, for the most part, it's definitely smoothed out. I still get a little bit here and there, mainly due to the stress that I'm under. Uh, for hairline, I definitely feel like it's squared out a little bit. Uh, it didn't really recede that much. Um, and I'm honestly happy about that. I was worried about going bald at, you know, 21. So that's at least one thing that, that's at least one thing I don't have to worry about. And most importantly, my mental state is, honestly, it's a lot clearer. I still have anxiety. I still have depression. That's one thing I also noted in my video. Testosterone does not cure any sort of mental illness. To be clear, I never thought it would, but when I first started HRT, I had this kind of euphoria the first, like, six, seven months. And then, you know, once my body started to balance out again, it, you know, just went back to kind of an, a typical depression state. And while that was disappointing, it gave me a healthy dose of reality that I still need to address things like my anxiety and my depression. Which I've been trying to do as well for the past couple of years. It really helps with drive, and I'm actually able to finish projects now instead of just starting and leaving. Even though I still have a billion projects going on, like I've always have, I still actually follow through. But yeah, so I guess that's about it. Keep this video as to the point as I can. Um, as far as this channel goes, I'm still going to be posting, as you see with my singing videos and just some other things like my pole dance videos. Maybe I'll vlog a little bit more, maybe I won't, but I don't think I'm as intent on being a regular on schedule YouTuber as I once might have wanted to be. So, uh, so for those of you who have stuck with me thus so far, Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. For those of you who are just new to my channel, hi, how you doing? And, uh, well, I guess that's it. Uh, stay safe out there, wear a mask, socially distance, you know the drill by now, I hope. Alright.